Other than winning a Final Four is winning a regular season conference title because you have to do it over the whole season. And to have the title outright already with four games to play is an incredible accomplishment. And so I told him in the locker room, now we have to get greedy. We have to try to win them all. And uh, it won't be easy. Obviously, you go to Boise and Nevada, two very good teams on the road, and here against UNLV and, uh, and uh, who am I missing? Colorado. Colorado State, who's playing very well. So four really hard games to go, but uh, now that we have the title, we have to have another goal. And that goal has to be to have a perfect season. So that, that will be the next step, try to finish with a perfect season. So I'm proud of these two guys. They played magnificently, and uh, they make a coach look good when they play like that. Question. No questions? For anybody, hey. what changed in the second half? I mean, was it the defense again that gave the offense? Um, yeah, I, I definitely think it was, it was our defense picked up um, in, in the second half, and we definitely went to the locker room and – as a team, told each other that, that we needed to pick it up and be better. And, and we came out in the second half. I think we definitely wanted this tonight, and we wanted to win this on the home court. And we came out, and I think we showed that in the second half. Brandon, you're for all three. Now that you've raised the trophy, you won a championship, and that personal step, was there a moment that you thought you could actually accomplish raising trophies? And there was a moment where you thought and discovered this team was special? Um, I think pretty early on I thought this team could be really special. Um, I got here in the summer um, with a bunch of guys and uh, I knew we had great pieces from the get-go but um, I think after that BYU game um, when a couple of us played great and a couple of, a couple of us didn't um, you kind of notice the depth of our team and uh, across the board we cover all spectrum so um, I think it's a credit to recruitment and just the way that we um, across the board are deep. Yanni, you were kind of the spark that your team needed in the first half tonight. What worked well for you? Um, I mean, the guards found me on a lot of slips. So um, Coach Dutch put us in great positions. Um, we ran some plays where we could slip the ball screens and uh, some off ball off uh, screens. And um, the guards just found me in great positions. Um, uh, my legs felt good today, so um, I was just trying to get up and down the court and um, be as aggressive as, aggressive as possible. Um, most definitely. I, I think it's, it's special to me because I was able to reach a thousand, and not only um, reach it, but reach it on the night that we hang a banner and, and win the conference. Um, uh, win the conference, and so I, I definitely, I definitely will cherish tonight. And but tomorrow, we've got to let it go and, and move on to the next next four games we have. Matt, not only did you surpass a thousand points, but you also passed Kawhi Leonard on the all-time scoring list. What does that mean to you? I actually didn't know that, but um, <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy I was able to do that. And um, uh, I feel like I feel like that's that's good company to be in. For each of you, and I know you, you've mentioned you have bigger goals. You want to be in the end of the season. But what was that feeling like to be under ladder and cutting down the net in front of all your fans and some family for some of you? I always think it's the greatest feeling in the world because, and it's it's the moment that we're doing it. It's exciting. You kind of realize a lot of the hard work you put in. But I always tell them 10, 12, 14 years from now when they come back with their families and they come to a game here in, at the place where they played and they can point to that banner and say, we hung that banner in 2020. That was us. We were part of that team. And that's always special. It's not just the moment it happens. It's a lifetime of memories and coming back to your school. And, and uh, if they come back in 12 or 14 years, I don't know if I'll still be here. <laughs> Well, I'll be at the games, but I, they'll have another coach maybe, but uh, they'll come back and look at that banner with fond memories. Coach, you um, early in the second half back got his third foul, and you left him in, and he went and had two baskets and assists right after that. It kind of spurred you, you know, spurt there that gave you separation. What was the thinking behind leaving? <laughs> trust did you show him? Well, we, we didn't inform Matt very well the first half because he got one foul and we took him out because he gets a second foul right away and he kind of looked and he said, I only got one foul. And I'm like, yeah, change your plan. You're coming out. So <laughs> we sat for a minute and, uh, you know, try not to get a second foul right away. But once he got the third foul, you know, I, with three fouls to play within the second half, I had no worry he was going to not foul out of the game. I don't know if we had a, we've had a guy foul out of a game yet. Now, we've been in foul trouble, but I don't know if we had a – you fouled out, did you? No. Okay. 
We don't have too many foul out. They're pretty protective of that, that final foul. So I, I, don't, I want them to be protect, protective of the first foul. I don't want a silly foul to open the game. So we're trying to work and get better at that. In, in the last couple of games, you actually, in Air Force Two, you, you did have some foul trouble. Is that just the grind of the season, guys getting tired and, and maybe reaching a little bit? And, and is that a concern going forward that that's something that could expose you a little bit? Yeah, foul trouble is always an issue. You know, they had, Manigold had three in the first half. I watched some of Utah State and Colorado State, and Kata had three in the first half. So it's part of basketball. So you have to do a good job of not getting a cheap one. You're going to earn enough. So don't get a cheap one where you go over the back because you're mad that you didn't get a call or don't reach in where you know you can't get it. We have to be smarter with our first foul. And uh, like I said, I trust these guys. We Obviously, we played three guys at Air Force with two fouls in the first half. And uh, weren't afraid to do it because they're smart. Matt, could you talk about that tomahawk slam you had in the second half? Kind of got everyone going. What, what happened on that play? Um, honestly, uh, I saw the ball going down the court and I, I thought, if I got it, then I, I was going to take off and try and dunk it. Um, I honestly didn't know there was somebody under the rim until I took off, but at that point, it was bad for him. He was, he was under the rim, so he got dunked on.